what up everyone welcome back to the channel man thanks for tuning in as you guys can see in the title today we are installing a dual oil catch can in the evo 10 i'm super super excited about this one because pretty much every single person including myself has the driven fab dual oil catch can which looks just like this right here uh again almost everyone has these 10 a and lines all that good stuff but today we are doing obviously like a, you've seen this car we're doing a build on this thing today so we actually decided to switch it up instead of getting the driven fab one we did decide to go with the STM uh, dual oil catch can. This is a vented one. As you can see, it comes with the two little filters on the very top, 10 AN lines. We are doing this on the plastic valve cover over here. They do have the metal valve cover fittings if you need them, but this is for the plastic one today. So there'll be slight variation if you have the metal valve cover, but uh, further ado, man, let's go ahead and jump straight in this piece and see how this gets installed. All right, so just to go ahead and look at this stuff that we got really quick, and then we'll go ahead and install this. First thing I'm gonna do is actually install the catch can and then I'll work on the lines on top of the valve cover and then we'll just reach in there and just connect these uh, to either side right here. This does come with the 10 AN lines with all the proper fittings. So you're gonna get all of your vibrant fittings here, 245s and one of the 90s. And we have a couple of other uh, washers and bolts and um, little clamps and stuff like that that you're gonna be needing that are provided in this kit. This is around the exact same price as the Driven Fab but you don't have to wait 18 weeks for them. No offense Driven Fab but as you guys know, yourselves you guys take crazy long to get them everything's on back order all the time not hating but at the same time step it up uh so boom we decided to go with the stm man not only is this container actually a little bit bigger but then you're not taking off your um your radiator overflow um and it's nice and hidden man you're gonna see where this thing goes it's so sweet and um it's right out of the way you're just gonna reach under the car and be able to have this little drain right here and just drain this thing out whenever needed um so that's that man so you have this 10 a.m lines all your fittings First thing we'll do is jack up this car though and we're gonna take out the little plastic tray just on the edge. Just on the edge on the very front, which you'll see me do here in a second, giving us some access to get this thing in. And it actually provides a little bolt that holds it right in its place. And as you can see, it's really cool. It has this little rubber thing that sits on the ledge. You'll see it sits on there. So that way there's no vibration and uh, all, or the vibration rather isn't making any noise. So um, yeah, man, let's jump into it. All right, now the car is jacked up safely on stands. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is just taking down this line of tens right here so we can move this tray because the actual um, catch can sits right behind the intercooler, basically right here on the subframe. Okay, so to get full access to that, for the video, I'm gonna actually take down the whole tray just to make it nice and easy, but I don't know if you necessarily have to, we'll see in one second. You at least have to take down this little front portion so you can get it up in there and you have some actual movement. So let's go ahead and knock it out. As you saw, I did take down the whole tray. Now that I've done it, I do suggest taking down that whole thing because if you don't take it down, it's definitely gonna be a pain in the butt to get your arms in there. You might be able to get that done for sure, but that is a pretty big catch can, so good luck with that if you don't. But regardless, so we're gonna go ahead and prep up here and then we'll jump under the car. You do have your two little provided filters right here with little clamps. So you're gonna be putting those right on the ends right there and clamping those down. Don't go crazy on the clamping. You already have your fittings right here, which will be connecting these lines in a second after we get all these vibrant things together. Uh, but to jump onto the car, you're just going to be grabbing your little bolt right here with your washer and your lock washer. You're going to be grabbing those, putting your filters on, and then we'll meet you right back down under here. All right, now jumping under the car, as I said, we just went ahead and added our little filters to the top right here. So your two little filters, again, just to show you, this is really cool. It has this little pad right here. You're going to see where that sits in a second. And then you have your little hole here for your bolt. Now just to turn around really quick and show you guys. Uh, this is the reference. So your, your oil filters here. Here's a little frame piece Right there. You're gonna see an open hole. So this naturally will have an open little bolt right there I think it's like a 12 uh, And then you had your little bolt and your washer and lock washer that is provided for so that will go right through the catch can You'll see me set you guys down here in a second And you're literally just gonna take that catch can and put it right up on the ledge right here Bolt that in and that is it for the install nice and simple And then I'll show you where the drain is and how that works and we'll jump up to the top and connect these lines
This is a 13 millimeter that you're gonna be tightening right here. So 13, make sure your lock washers are on there. Beautiful, and that's how it's done, man. All tightened down on the 13. Again, this is your little drain that you're gonna loosen up whenever you wanna drain this thing out. Now we'll jump over to the top, connect those lines up, and then I'll just be reaching back down here before I put the tray back down and just connecting the 10 AN lines with your vibrant uh, fittings to either side of this. And just to get this cover off, you're literally just gonna take this and just pull up. Just popping it right up. You're gonna have all these little rubber connections right here, all on the top and stuff like that. Just pops right up nice and simple. Now here's two different lines that we're gonna be getting to. The first one is gonna be this one back here, okay? So you're just gonna disconnect this, clamping this off like that, and we're gonna pull that out in a second. And then you have yours up here. Now after taking this off, you're gonna pull it off just like that. Now down here on this connection right here, obviously you're gonna be pulling this whole line off. It does provide a little cap. You're gonna be capping that off and then putting a little clamp on there because you're not gonna be reusing this anymore. So with this disconnected, we'll start on this one and then we'll jump over to the other. You're gonna take your 24 millimeter bolt or um, uh, socket here, and you're just gonna loosen this up. Bam, nice and simple, that thing slides right out. And again, as you just guys saw in the kit provided right here, same type of threads, this metal one is gonna be the one that's gonna replace it so we can connect our 10 a.m. Uh, 45 degree angle to this. So let's go ahead and get this out of the package and we'll get this one in there. All right, and there we are. We are out of the bag now. Just to show you guys, you do have this little slot right here. Uh, and as you can see in the slot right here, there's a little rubber ring. So we're just gonna be moving this from one to the other. All right, here's your little rubber ring. I did do this out of camera because that took embarrassingly long to get this thing out of here. But as you can see, same style gap right here. So you'll just take this and replace this right over onto the next one, filling that little gap right there. And then you're just gonna take this and you'll be able to put this thing in nice and simple, screw this right back in. All right, so caution, caution, man. When you do connect this thing back in and you are tightening this thing down with your wrench, uh, just remember that this thing is plastic. Again, you might be using the aluminum one, but even that being said, aluminum is not as uh, super, super sturdy, right? It can flex a little bit when you tighten stuff down. So go ahead and we're gonna do this thing right over the top again. And we're just gonna get a couple cranks just to be tight like that. And that thing is plenty enough just like that, nice and simple, maybe five, 10 pounds of pressure at maximum. You don't want, again, you don't wanna over crank it and strip any of the, the threads inside here and or on the aluminum style one. So that being said, this is where we're gonna be connecting. So again, 45 degrees gonna go on this to this in a second, but we have to make the lines first. So we'll go ahead and set up our back one next by, uh, again, we've already taken our clamp off, so now I'm just gonna slide that thing right off. All right, and there it is, man. So this is it. As you guys saw me struggle a little bit, I did pull this thing right out of there. It was uh, pretty sealed on there being so hot. But this thing connects back here right into the intake. So I will be pulling that thing off there in a second and we're gonna be capping that off because we're not gonna be reusing that again. So that will get capped. Again, down here, we'll pull this one off right here. This was the one here. We'll pull that portion off. We'll cap that and put a clamp on that thing. But just to show you, there's a variation between the metal and the plastic valve cover. So if you have a metal valve cover, it will come with a new little piece. Now, Driven Fab is the one I have. They did suggest, and it worked perfectly, is taking your little metal piece. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna have like a little elbow right there on your metal one, right? You're, uh, so you're literally gonna take pliers and you're gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and loosen it up nice and simple and then eventually you'll be able to slide that thing right out. It does take some force, um, so be ready for that. But you can go ahead and get that piece out and then you take your new one, you actually put it in the freezer to get it as small, I guess, as possible in that, in that little, weird little simple way and then you basically will be pressing that into there. Okay, with the plastic one, as you can see, this thing is built right in, this big old fat line. So this 10 a.m. line will go right over that and we'll clamp that down. It will run down here. We'll add a 90 degree uh, fitting from the vibrance to the catch can, 45 degree on the uh, vibrance up here to the 45 degree that will connect to this right here. Cap this, cap that, and we'll be done with the project. So let's go ahead and, and uh, dive right into this. Whoa. 
Whoa, Super Psych. Okay, as you guys can see, this is not the cap. This came on one of the 10 a.m. lines on the end of it, so I thought this was the cap that would go over here because that's the only one that's in the entire kit. Uh, unfortunately, STM did not provide uh, caps just to cap this off and for your intake over there. So I'll run to the store in one second. I'll fast forward you guys, and we'll go ahead and put that clamp over there. Or, I'm sorry, the cap over, and we'll clamp it. It does provide the clamps, strange enough. So we'll go ahead and clamp that in one second. I'll show you exactly what size, but we'll go ahead and, uh, without further ado, get straight to the lines and get those things knocked out. All right, great. So now we have our lines out. The catch can is in, so right now you got to make these things, unfortunately. Uh, so they come with five-foot uh, pieces over here. These are the 10 a.m. lines. Now there's a video above you and in the link to, in the bottom to deeply explain uh, how to make these lines. But just to give you a quick uh, run over, as you can see, I already made my ends over here for these ones. Remember that your 90 degree one is going to be for the rear one. So the 90 degree is going to be for the rear connection on the valve cover. This 90 degree will go on the actual catch can and the uncut portion right now, you actually don't put a fitting on. It will just slide right over there because it is completely just built right into that valve cover. So you just, uh, we're going to be cutting this in a second though. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect this to the side. I'm going to run it up as sleek as possible to the back one, mark it, cut it, and then I'll be able to connect that. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. So the other one is going to be for the front of the valve cover. Uh, this is the one that has the 45. So I got a 45 here. And just to show for the example here, I don't want to jump too far ahead. This is how you're going to do it. So basically we have a 45 degree angle here. All you're going to do is unscrew this portion just like this. Now mind you two things. You're going to connect this to the valve cover first. I'm sorry, you're going to connect this to the catch can first and then run your line up just like the back one I just explained. And that way you have a perfect measurement cut and you have the best flow going down and you're not gathering like, let's say, an extra slack, any of the uh, vapors building up. So basically you're just going to unscrew this thing just like this. And then you're going to take this little cap and you're going to take this and shove this all the way down. Now I'm not going to do it because I'm going to be cutting this in a second. But you're going to shove it all the way down until the, it bumps up to the threads in the inside. And then you're going to take this and you're going to get this, I'm sorry, you're going to get this back in there. So this is tapered going smaller to bigger. So when you go in there and you're screwing it in, it is going to take some force and that's why I have my wrenches over here. You're going to have to really crank it in there as it's expanding it. And after it's expanded like that, I mean, this thing is locked in. These fittings right here, like, will never, ever pull out. Um, all right, perfect. So as, as I explained already and I just did, I just connected the 45 degree angle, the first one to the bottom catch can on this side. And then I'm just gonna run it up just like this. All right, so let's change angles to give you a better perspective here. Uh, so basically your core, your 45 is running off of the catch can down there. Then you're gonna run it straight up here. As you can see, excessive amount of slack we're gonna be cutting off here. So what I'm gonna do is just run it up nice and sleek here. I did put the other fitting on, that way I knew how long because this is what the part you're connecting to and not actually that portion. So I'm just gonna run it up just like that. And as you can see, I did give myself about an inch, I wanna say, of slack right there. I was bumping it up because it's going to come to right there. And I was making a little mark across there with my marker here. And then uh, that one's ready to get cut. So now I'll grab the other one, go down there, run into the back over here, and uh, do the same thing. And then we'll cut these up. All right, same, same. I got my 90 degree over here on the driver's side of the catch can and I just ran it up nice and sleek here, wrapped it around this edge. Now mind you, like I've said, this one's literally just going to get cut and slide right over this big fat end right here. It doesn't have a fitting like this does. And then you clamp it down with the clamp provided. So yeah, man, this thing's just coming up nice and sleek right here. It's going to come all around. I'm going to give myself, as always, about an extra inch, I want to say. Take my marker. And give a little dash mark on that and now pull these out cut these up and put them right back in all right perfect and just to give a little visual if most likely not but that went just straight through bumped up to the threads now now making sure this thing is not backing out as you're doing it if you watch that other video he also explains that Making sure it's not backing out when you start it. This is tapered style. And you'll just go and you'll start screwing that thing right into there. You're gonna have to get two wrenches on this piece though to make sure that happens. So again, I'm gonna do it off camera once it gets past hand tight. And uh, you'll be in it to put these things back in. 
Boom. And there it is, man. So you got line here, line here. Both were connected, ran up, cut, just like we showed there. I reconnected the ends right here. Um, and that's it, man. So we're going to run this one with the 45s onto this side. And then running it straight up, nice stream right to this connection right here. And then you're going to run your other one that has the 90 straight down, just like this, on this side of the connection down inside there. And then it'll just run up nice and smooth up here. And then it cuts right under that and connects right onto there. And then we'll clamp that piece down right there. Again, if you have the metal one, it will come with like a little nipple thing that you replace this portion of. But this thing's the big old bulky one. And it just slides right over that unit. So that's that. So I'm going to reach in there. Now I'll get under the car, show you an under view of how these things are ran, how sleek it is, and an above view. And then we'll finish putting the car back together. That's it, man. So now you have your connection right there with the 10 a.m. going straight down. You can see the stream. It goes straight into the side of that catch can. So right into the side, nice and sleek, all the way down, jumping over to the back side. You can also see that one is all clamped down, running nice and sleek down here, running straight down to that 90 degree, right into the top of, or right into the side of the catch can. Nice and simple. I'll pop on the bottom now and show you guys what it looks like from the bottom side. But as you can see, job success, man. And it's nice and sleek, hidden out of the way. And um, yeah, let's check it. All right, all right, man. All right, so jumping down, you can see that is gonna be your 90 degree running on the driver's side over here, 90 degree, going straight up, nice and simple. Then you jump over, there's the beautiful catch can right there. And there is going to be right there, if I can get a better visual on it, bam, the 45. So your 45 right up nice and sleek to the top over there. That is your drain, just as a reminder, you just take that silver portion right there and you just grab either side and loosey-goosey that piece and it will drain straight out, nice and sleek and simple. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. The only thing left is these little caps, as I said, STM, I think they just made a mistake and didn't send the caps because they sent the clamps, but not the caps for it. So we're just gonna go buy some little baby vacuum caps for that, as well as the line in the back. Remember that line in the back that went into the intake. This is the line that went into the intake. So this part went into it right here, and this is the part that goes into the intake. So you can actually take this and shimmy this away from itself. And it's just this little elbow. So same deal, like we're capping this off. We're gonna cap this thing off right here, a little clamp it down, and then we're gonna put that right back into the intake. So intake clamped, that clamped, tighten down there, tighten down there, tighten up here, tighten up here, put your cover back on, go ahead and take your under tray, slap that piece back on really quick, and then uh, we'll go ahead and test start it up, even though I don't know what we're testing, and that'll be that, man. Slammo, here we are, man. So this is it, bro. So we just ran to the store. These are gonna be the 3 8 inch rubber little vacuum caps, okay? So they're just like this, super simple. Just got these at uh, AutoZone. So this was the little elbow that went onto the back of the intake. This part goes in the intake, and this used to have the hose that went uh, over to the back side. So I'm just gonna take this, and these are nice and tight, so you're just gonna squeeze this thing on. All right, just like that. I did do it off camera because holy cow, I had to get some uh, umph behind that piece because it's so tight. But it does squeeze on there. So this squeezes on there. It's definitely not going to fall off. I'll put a zip tie on this in a second or a clamp. Uh, nice and simple. And then again, that'll just go back into the intake in that hole right there. And that'll be that for this portion right here. And then you're going to take your other little three A's. The only other cap you had was this little cap right here that goes right here. So I'm just going to lean over there, uh, squeeze that on because again, it's really, really uh, tight. All right, I don't think the zip tie is necessarily needed, but let's keep it proper and get something on there. So that's that. Let's clip this off, reach in the back, put that one in.
All right, and that is it, man. Cover back on over here, as you can see, nice and plenty of clearance going straight down there into the side, as we've already shown, and then coming right at the back. This actually does clear the cover. We'll most likely remove this because we're doing a valve cover wire tuck. Post that big old turbo kit on there very soon. But nice and sleek, straight down, drops in, 90 degrees in, and that is it for the project. All right, so the Driven Fab one there, which everybody has, but now we are into the STM game, man. So STM is actually the exhaust and test pipe that I have, which I'm super, super happy about. So I've been peeking their website for a super long time. When we decided to do a, a whole new setup on this and we're doing a bunch of stuff, I started sourcing out. And not only, obviously, does Radium have a catch can that has two little containers, uh, Driven Fab, you can get there, but you might wait two to four months with nobody picking up the phone, whatever. Um, but now STM, man, I do want to give you guys a time frame. That thing only took about a week to get to us. And look at it, man. Those are the top right there. It sits in such a nice little spot. You're just going to jack up the car right here, and you're going to loosen up two tens in the front to drop that bottom tray just a little bit to reach your hand in there. Loosen that thing up, and you'll be able to drain it nice and simple. I actually think it's a better setup than having to pump this thing out. And actually, always a little bit drains back down, and you might get some on yourself. So that's that. But that is that. So, guys, thank you so much for everyone tuning in. I hope you guys get pumped up about this new STM dual oil catch can. There's another company on the market now uh, making a very efficient, beautiful one. Uh, it goes on there nice and sleek. You can also get it in the powder coat uh, black. We just decided to just do brush aluminum. I mean, it's pretty hidden, so there's no reason to spend the extra money unless you want to make everything super, super sleek. But uh, do what you want. Do what you please. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment in the section below for any other questions you guys have, any comments, concerns, anything like that. Please subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff, man. We'll see you guys in the next video.